Warm welcome to the online classes of St. Thomas School, Maua. How are you all? Since this is the sixth day of our online classes, I hope that you are doing very well in preparing your notes as well as doing your homeworks based on the videos that you have been receiving. Today on verse, we are starting our grammar class. Friends, this is our textbook. As you can see, this is a colorful picture. So, like this, whenever when we go forward, I wish and pray that your life in St. Thomas be a colorful one. And in the first chapter, we are going to discuss about the sentence. The previous classes, you might have studied about what you mean by sentence. As you know, sentence is a group of words arranged together in a particular manner in order to make a complete sense. There are four kinds of sentence, declarative or assertive, interrogative, exclamatory and imperative. And without wasting the time, let us uh, go to the chapter here uh, in this e this year we are going to study little more detail about the types of sentences first one is declarative sentence as you know declarative sentence or assertive sentences as the name stands make the statements or assert something for example we live in Delhi. That is a statement. And this declarative sentence can be a positive one or a negative one. For example, we live in Delhi. That is a positive sentence. Then we do not live in Delhi. That is a negative statement. Now let us come to the interrogative sentence. As you know, interrogative sentences are the sentences that ask the questions. And children, you need to remember that the interrogative sentence should always carry a question mark at the end of it. For example, we are living now is a statement or a declarative sentence. Are we living now is an interrogative sentence. Now look at your textbook. There you can find out a question mark after are we living now. And there is a few particular, there are a few more particular things about interrogative sentence. Now, in order to make the questions, we need to put the either the auxiliary verb or the modal verb at the beginning of the sentence. Then comes the subject. Look at the uh, next sentence. There is an exam tomorrow. Is, is the verb that is we have taken to the front side and we have... Uh, uh, we have made the question. So when there is no auxiliary verb, we use the auxiliary verb do, the forms of do and at the beginning of the question and the noun or pronoun comes immediately after it. So suppose if there are no uh, uh, verb in the sentence, auxiliary verb in a sentence, so we need to use the form of uh, the um, auxiliary verb do uh, uh, it is it will be according to the person number and tense for example i like coffee so if you ask the question there is, since there is no auxiliary verb we put an auxiliary verb do you like the coffee question mark then look at the next sentence karen stayed for dinner did karen stay for dinner with question mark since that sentence is in the past tense, we have used did there. The form of the past form of do, did is being used. Now, the questions that begin with the auxiliary verbs are called yes or no questions because they always give us the answer yes or no. 
and there are another type of questions that are called WS questions. The questions that are starting with what, where, when, why, who, whom, whose or how and uh, interrogative sentences often to start with a question word and we have a few sentences there that uh, we shall see uh, in the last part of the chapter uh, there we shall discuss about that one now let us move to the another part and before that in the interrogative sentence it, if you want to uh, show the quantity we use how much how much for uncountable nouns and how many for countable nouns for example I have 5 rupees. How much money do you have? Or how many rupees do you have? So always remember that how much is being always used with uncountable nouns. Then how many with the countable nouns. So now move to the exclamatory sentences. The sentences that express sudden surprise or delight or anger or enjoyment are called exclamatory sentences. And like the interrogative sentence, we have a mark in the end of that sentence. That is the exclamation mark. Sometimes this question was what or how also can be used. What a lovely day. How nice of you to come. And sometimes by making the question like the interrogative sentence, we can uh, make the exclamatory sentence. But the thing is that, in the interrogative sentence, we add the question mark at, at last, but here you need to add the exclamatory mark. For example, it is a lovely day. Isn't it a lovely day? It is a surprise. Isn't it a surprise? Now let us move to the another kind that is called imperative sentence. So suppose you want to give an order or command or if you want to make a request, we use this imperative sentence. And what is the speciality of this imperative sentence? Dear friends, imperative sentence, we never use the subject. Since you is the subject there and that is implied in a sentence, we never use that. So, for example, look at your sentence. Keep your room clean. It is you keep your room clean. But in English language, with the imperative sentence, we never add the uh, subject. Now we shall um, look at the next one. Form How to form a negative. Now as we have seen with the statement. We have told that we need to add a uh, note uh, in a sentence. For example, we live in Delhi. We do not live in Delhi. So what is what to do with uh, if there is no auxiliary verb, look at the sentence here. This is a good book. There is is there. So this is not a good book. But we live in Delhi. There is no auxiliary verb. What, what we do? So we need to add the forms of do plus not. Then we need to, uh, uh, then the verb will be coming. For example, we live in Delhi. We do not live in Delhi. Then they traveled to the city. Since that sentence is uh, the past tense, so they did not travel to the city. Or, as, or as look at the next sentence. Kamala writes poetry. Since Kamala is a third person singular, that's what uh, we need to use does. So Kamala does not write poetry. Now, there are a few rules for forming the negative is being given there. Now, since if the forms of be are there in the sentence, just add a note after that be. For example, the money is in the safe. The money is not in the safe. Now, first of all, we are seeing about assertive sentence and imperative sentence. Next one, if there are other verbs, we need to add do not. Or the forms of do not. For example, we went home early. We did not go home early. Or cut the ribbon. Do not cut the ribbon. So the forms of do should be changed according to the person as well as the tense. 
Now, if there is an auxiliary verb, we need to add not after this auxiliary verb, then the main verb follows. For example, we will reach on time. We will not reach on time. They have finished the assignment. They have not finished the assignment or they haven't finished the assignment. Now, how to use or how to form the negative in the interrogative sentence? The word not is added after the auxiliary verb when the auxiliary verb plus not combination is used in its contracted form. Contracted form means n after n, then we use t with a semicolon. For example, are we leaving now? Aren't we leaving now? But if we not, we are not using the contracted form, how it will be coming? Are we not leaving now? That means the auxiliary verb comes, then the subject, then note, then the main verb, then whatever object, question mark. If there is a contracted form, are in we or isn't it? So same way like the, it will be coming. Or else, do you like sport? Don't you like sports? Or do you not like sports? So that way also we can use. Or, or else, where, where they're waiting for you? Where in the waiting for you? Or where they're not waiting for you? Now, how to form the neg uh, negative sentences in the exclamatory sentence? Negative questions forms are used but with an exclamation mark instead of a question mark. So in the negative uh, exclamatory sentence, the same way how we have formed in the interrogative sentence, the negatives we can form. But at the last, in the la last of the sentence, we need to add the exclamatory, exclamatory mark instead of the question mark. So dear students, till now we were seeing about the sentences. We have seen the definition of the sentence, then four types of sentences, declarative, exclamatory, interrogative and imperative. How we have been using those, we have seen, uh, then we have seen how to form the negative. That's all for today. And with this, you will be receiving a PDF. And in that PDF, the answers of the exercises have been given. So, uh, there are only three exercises in this chapter. So, in your homework book, in your notebook, uh, do write the question as well as the answers and submit to me whenever you have been asked. And I would like to end my class with a quotation. You are amazing just the way you are. You are amazing just the way you are. Always remember this sentence in your life. And I wish you the best of weekend. Enjoy your company with the parents. Talk to them. Interact with them. And ask their help in doing the homeworks. Thank you dear students. Thank you.